Alex. Sorry, sound will be better in a moment. And we need this. Wait. Need to figure out which way around this goes. Both sides needs to be here. Yeah, um, but your audio is going to get better once I plug it in properly. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's change the studio a bit. Maybe raise this up a tiny bit. Audio improved. Wonderful. So I have three devices today because, no, sorry, I'm doing this wrong. I have three devices today because I'm using one for picture reference, one for chat, and one for video. All right, cool. There we have chat. And let me just work on image. All right, sorry, getting organized here. Here you can see my chat window with myself where I've got some images. So what I'm doing today is I have a commission for a friend and we actually went to a local forest together and spent a long while staring at the ground. And so I'm doing three little pieces. They're four by six each, but they're just going to be a little patch of forest floor each. Um, and just like with a wide variety of little things that you find on the forest floor. Um, plants and small animals and uh, this is a um, feather from a type of woodpecker. And some lichen. So I've got two pieces of paper taped off. Um, and the third one I'm not gonna work on today but I'm using some of the photos and sketches that I took from the forest and some of our discussions to compose some little patches of forest floor on these papers. I was going to draw these out first, but I didn't. Stream's a bit quiet today. So, uh, yeah, I'll work 
on this first piece here. So I have on this one, I'm going to have a little fern growing out of some leaf litter. And there's going to be a little frog over here. Well, not a frog, a, uh, a little toad. Let me show you my little toady guy. I have a little toad here. So let's draw him life size. He was about this big. And he blended in super well with his surroundings. So I'm going to draw my little toady guy. I'm initially sketching in a really thin pencil, um, but then I'm actually going to go over with some sepia ink um, to try to create some definition, um, but then everything here is going to be pretty brown, so it's all going to blend in together pretty well. Seems like I've just got Alex in the chat right now. Hi Alex, how are you? Okay, so I've now got seven people watching. That's cool. Hi everyone. So today I'm drawing some forest floor scenes. So I'm creating some little compositions. Uh, based on some photos that I took the other day in the forest. And I am going to need an eraser. One moment, please. Try this again. I've been a little distracted trying this. Okay, so this guy was super tiny in real life.
goodness, this little toad is so awkward to draw. I'm not used to drawing animals. I'm trying to give him his uh, right shape here. Here I have There we go, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I should turn on my studio lights. Get you some better color. And there. Better? And he's got his little fingers. Little toads are so cute. They're all over the natural areas here. They're so tiny. And they blend right in with their surroundings. You really only see them when they move. We're up to seven people in the chat. Hi, new people. So the goal with these paintings is that when you first look, it's not going to be super obvious that there's this little toad guy here, even though I'm drawing him in very carefully. Um, but he blends in with his surroundings, so I'm going to also be drawing all of the background around him in similar colors. And hopefully, if all goes to plan, I'll just blend in so that you have to take take a really close look at this painting to see the little toad. Does anyone know about toad identification? Sorry, um, this stopped updating. 
Sorry. Okay, cool. Hi, Mikey. That sounds like a great day, Mikey. Oi, oi, challenge, love. We've got international representation. ID toads, the one your big sisters pick up are the ones that pee on them. <laughs> gotcha. Well, these are really, really tiny. They're like, like I feel like I might even be drawing it slightly too big here. Um. But it's hard to draw much smaller than this and still get detail, so we're just gonna have to forgive this toad being a little bit on the chunkier side. So, uh, Angela Mugnato is my great aunt in Brazil. It's lovely to see you too. I'm second guessing myself. I usually sketch in pen and then I have to be a little bit more confident <laughs> because I'm sketching in pencil. I, you know, give myself more room for error and then, and then I make more errors. Anyone feel like that? Could you cup your hand and comfortably cover hide this toad. Yeah, so they're really, really tiny. Like I feel like I'm drawing it too big. It would just be like this big in my hand. They're really, really tiny. And there's a, a local natural area that is um, not the one that I went to. Uh, so my friend and I, uh, so my friend commissioned these three pieces and we biked out to one nat natural area sort of on one edge of town. On the other edge of town, there's a creek where a whole bunch of these are around and they just, you walk down the trail there and you'll just, they'll just jump at you. They're crazy. Um, in the woods though, they're just, they're barely visible. They're so tiny. Like if I was, uh, I'm uh, trying to figure out what the best way to do this is. It, they're like, real life, they're like, yeah, this big. What exactly are those buds on your desk? Uh, I'm not sure. You, are you talking about these, Mikey? This is a piece of lichen. This is a uh, feather from, uh, I believe it's called a yellow shafted flicker. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely adorable. Um, and so I'm trying to create that 
in here, but I'm um, having a bit of a challenge. Like I feel like it's just growing as I as I draw them. Like I made I've made it too big again. So I'm gonna take off the front of this toad and try to get Yeah, yeah, this is just a patch of lichen. Um, so I prefer to paint from life. I've, I've said this a lot. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. We're going to take some time to draw this toad properly. Uh, I, I try to paint from life wherever I can, but it's, you know, I can't really make a finished illustration in the woods. And... Uh, even though in this case I have the most wonderful client who came with me and spent hours staring at the ground in the woods. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that's still, like I did sketch while I was out, but just really, really rough sketches here. Um, I hung out outside and sat in front of a crusty log and sketched this and this took about an hour um so you know there's just, there's just not enough hours in the day to draw a little toad from life plus they move hi stephen you are cooking and watching golf and a couple of other things sounds like a busy day I am trying to draw a to toad and struggling. Okay. Last shot. And I'm gonna move this away so that I'm not crushing the other piece of paper. Yeah, so. Let's try to make them yeah, as small as possible. Right. Like if I have Maybe that's better. And then we are going to just be a little bit more like this. I need to put this little puppy part here. I don't know why I erased it because now I'm just drawing it the same size. I should have just accepted. But I was going to draw this a little bit bigger.
Mikey says, I'm so tired from getting up for school with my son all week. Glad to just be relaxing. Um, Mikey, is your son doing uh, like online schooling right now? I know that he was really excited to go back to school. Did you end up sending him? Could you draw a little star next to toad and then along the bottom objects not drawn to scale? I mean, I'm going to fill in the whole background as well. So the goal is that when you look at it, you're not going to see, it's just like if you're looking at a, um, a patch of forest floor and you kind of have to search to see the toad like you would in real life. That's the goal. So. I feel like every time I do this, it's coming out worse. I don't know if it's because I'm distracted by chatting or, or what's going on, but I'm not. Usually I draw better than this guy. <laughs> I like his little never noticed this in person, but if you look at his little arms, he has like a, his little elbow has little ridges like from too much bending, little wrinkles. There's no back to school until November. For now, it's still virtual learning, but I have to pre be present during all sessions. So it's like three hours a day just sitting next to him. I'm so sorry, Mikey, that sounds terrible. So as some of you know, I ordered a bunch of palettes, heavy enamel palettes from China. And the past three days, I've got updates from UPS saying, oh, it's gonna be delivered tomorrow. So that is supposed to be delivered sometime today. It was supposed to be before the stream and I was going to show them off, but uh, they haven't arrived yet. They might arrive partway through this stream. I think he's really cute when you keep erasing a cute little froggy. I think he's cute too, but I'm trying for accuracy here. I'm getting there though. Like, it's hard to, 
it's just trying to get him all in proportion, like make sure that everything's accurate here. And that, uh, Okay, so that's what's going on here. That needs to be lower. And that one also needs to be lower. That's what I'm doing wrong. Aha! Uh -huh. They don't. They're just smaller, these little guys. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. I am going to be brave. I'm going to start using ink because I clearly draw better in ink. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. We both appreciate it, I'm sure. Okay. All right. So this starts up here. There we go. And that only kind of go here. Kind of do a bit there. feel like it's quite an underrated phrase, like I could say to someone, I'm 100% certain that you're going to screw this up, but I believe in your ability to adapt and learn from this. <laughs> yep. Marshall says, finally, I can see what you're painting. Yes, sorry. Um, so I, I'm drawing this little toad uh, and it blends in very well with its surroundings. So you can't really see. Maybe if I expand this, you can see a little bit better. What pen are you using? I am using a, uh, this is a Twisby Eco. And I have a platinum sepia 
pigment ink in it. So I am going to watercolor over these. Um, and it's all going to be similar colors, so the ink is going to sort of uh, ideally disappear a little bit into my painting here. Platinum, sepia, platinum referring to quality and not sheen. Um, platinum referring to the brand. So, so there's a fountain pen and fountain pen ink company called Platinum. They make pens and they make ink. And they make this ink, which is sepia colored and made with pigments. Uh, which is rare in fountain pen ink. Uh, fountain pen ink is usually made with dyes um, because pigments have a tendency to clog fountain pens. Um, so these are very finely ground pigments, um, which means that they're light fast. And it also means that they are waterproof. So I can watercolor over it and it's not gonna make the, the lines bleed all over. I'm trying to draw in some of the texture too, so that it's not just an outline of this little toad. Again, the goal with this, with these pieces, is just to have like a patch of forest floor that, as it would appear, and uh, then if you're looking at the piece, you'll just see, you know, some forest floor, but if you look closer, then you'll see a bunch of cool little hidden things. Angela says, I'm leaving la now. Ciao! Abraços! E abraços a todos aí. So this painting is going to have a toad and a little fern here and then some little hemlock cones and then leaf litter and hemlock needles all over. Um, and then I'm actually making three of these. So another one is going to have uh, daddy long legs, which is a type of arachnid, not a spider. Um, I've forgotten what the scientific name is on a piece of 
rotting log that has some moss growing on it with the fruiting bodies from the, the bryophytes, possibly some gold thread as well. Uh, and the last one is going to be another patch of forest floor, much like this one, and it's going to have this little feather on it and a bunch of autumn leaves. So that's the three pieces. Um, I'm obviously not going to be doing three pieces today. I'm just going to be sketching and start this one. I don't know how far I'll get, but that's the process. It takes a while. little frog is something else. I can picture it in your hand. Yeah, he's adorable. I love him. Um, so then I'm also going to have things like little hemlock uh, needles. Here's a little hemlock needle. And it's just going to be a patch of forest floor all over here. Cannot yet really see but do predict adorable tiny toes. Yeah, so there's, there's, uh, here's an adorable tiny toe. And here's an adorable tiny toe. I'm trying to look at his. Doesn't really show in my reference, but I'm going to give him another one right here. And then this one has a little tiny toe this way. And a tiny toe this way. So then there's some little lines. I'm just going to give him some little wrinkle lines. And some little extra patterning here. And some extra texture. Bits here. Tiny toad toes, yeah, yeah. So then there's some more texture this way, and then some more texture this way. Let's give him a little bit more of a cheek here. Yeah, I'm definitely doing better now that I'm 
sketching an ink. It's kind of weird what an effect that has, just psychologically. <laughs> when I have the ability to use an eraser, I just don't draw things right. Okay, so I'm gonna move on from this toad and do some other bits of this forest floor now. So this little teeny tiny um, fern I'm gonna put over here. And it is also tiny, so I wanna put this. You know what, I'm gonna run it off the page a little bit. And the goal is because this fern is so much brighter, I'm hoping that you'll notice the fern first and you have to look a little bit closer to even see the little toad. That's my goal. And I'm gonna rearrange how these fronds uh, show up because I can do that. So I'm gonna put this longest one this way. So I'm drawing stuff off a forest floor. So I biked out to the edge of town to a patch of forest, a natural area just outside of where I live on, what was it, Tuesday? Uh, and then actually with a friend who's commissioned some uh, paintings three a set of three little paintings and they're just scenes from the forest floor and so I'm trying to do like a uh, you know have some hidden treasures in here so um, I had this little we found this little toad that just it blends right in with its surroundings um, and that was lovely. So we are going to, sorry, what was I saying? What was I saying? What am I doing? I don't even know where I'm drawing anymore. I'm confused. Okay. Wait, okay. So this is, And so the idea is this is what you would see if you were looking down on the forest floor, you would see all of these things coming out um, and you might not spot all of the little treasures all at once. So the goal is then to, to have everything just sort of blended in. Um, the toad really is very nearly the same color as the leaf litter on the ground. Um, and then we're gonna have just this tiny little fern that's growing, popping out. And I'm doing the 
videos in a little bit of a different method than I've used on most of my recent pieces. I am inking it. Um, so usually I sketch in ink and watercolor, and then for my finished pieces, I usually just do watercolor. So I have a, just a very, very basic sketch um, that I'll transfer onto my watercolor paper, and then I'll develop all the details in watercolor. And then when I'm sketching, I usually use a pen to sketch with. So sketching with a pencil is messing with my brain and I feel like it's not really helping me. Um, I'm just like very uncertain and drawing things sort of wrong and backwards. Do any of you ever feel like that? Maybe it's also just the fact that I have people watching. I don't know. Okay, so maybe if I just go straight to ink now, maybe that'll be better. How was your week, Dan? I'd rather have been at home doing all my art bits. Pen, what, uh, or sorry, uh, Dan, what do you do usually during, like, the week? I guess I've never asked you what your day job is. How are things in Canada? Um, things are good. I biked, oh, about 10-ish kilometers on Tuesday to get out to this forest. So, um, that really did a number on me. Uh, that used to be my regular commute. In fact, we parked our bikes um, in the parking lot of the place where I used to work. And so I used to do that twice a day. And it used to be easy and it's not easy anymore. I'm really out of shape. What payroll I'm in. Ah, okay. Do you enjoy that? Or, you know, just a job. Okay, I don't hate it, but can't wait until I can do it part-time. Do you feel like you're close to that?
about a year away, I need to be able to get commissions. Yep, I've been there. You'll make it. Says, I hope so. I don't even need to get many per month to make up the difference. Yeah, it is. It's also, um, illustration is kind of weird. Things do seem to sort of snowball. Um, so there's definitely, you know, there are good months and bad months for sure, but successes do seem to build on, on each other. And I, you know, you get to the point where, you do have more work than you can do sometimes, so that's nice. Three days is very different from 30 days, Alex. I've had a lot of fun commissions this year and I'm hoping that carries forward for um, I get some freedom in what I'm illustrating in my commissions recently which is really nice and um, I've had a few where it's um, you know subjects that are way up my alley rather than Botanical art, a lot of commissions can be floral or um, they're not necessarily, you know, exactly what I want to be painting, um, but things have been good lately, so hopefully that sticks. Well, that sounds frustrating regardless, Alex. I have to say, I'm not sure what it's doing for my work quality, but I am enjoying having company while I'm doing this. <laughs> so not really doing anything for my speed, but pretty nice. I start thinking about what I So I think I'm probably going to do the fern and then the, sorry, the little toad that I did and this fern that I'm doing now. And then I'm actually gonna put a wash over the whole uh, piece. Just like, so 
some nice yellow uh, to start tying it all together and start seeing where I can start adding other things. The Zodiac one looked super fun. Uh, well, the next time I get a commission like that, Dan, I'll send them your way. That was an adventure, and I'm glad that I did it once. How quickly does that ink dry? Is smudging a concern? It hasn't been a huge issue, um, but I haven't really been testing it that much. I mean, here, I can erase over my little guy here. I'm also, I guess, not terribly concerned about smudging because it's all going to be painted over with sort of brown colors. I mean, not these. These are going to be painted over with some very bright, bright greens, but. So I'm using micropore tape, which is like surgical tape, because um, it makes a nice clean line. Picked up that trick from Otto, but um, it also picks up all the little smudges and looks really dirty. <laughs> How are you? We just had dinner. So interesting, everyone's on completely different times. <laughs> I had lunch, sort of. Today I painted a lot of skies. I found quite some articles saying that the sky color is cerulean blue. 
Would you say the same? And what is your favorite color brand? Um, I would not say that there is a sky color. Uh, skies come in all colors, uh, all for all different varieties of blues and all kinds of other colors too. Um, so I wouldn't say that one specific cerulean or any other color is the sky color. Um, I don't keep cerulean in my palette. Um, I don't find a huge amount of use for it. Uh, I also don't paint a huge number of landscapes, but I guess I do paint some. Uh, and usually what I would end up doing is mixing up, uh, I would mix a sky. Um, and so what I would often do if I wanted like a sky blue is I would start with uh, this cobalt turquoise. Um, that's here. This one is from Winsor Newton, but I'm not particularly brand loyal. And then mix it up with either a different blue or a purple or a brown or a something to mute it down. If I needed a more muted sky color. Yes, it's lovely. I got it fairly recently. I've got, um, I'm trying to sort of color code my pens now. Um, so I have this orange that has the platinum sepia ink in it. Um, and then I have a clear one that has black. Do you paint a lot of landscapes, Annette? Yeah, actually, I guess on the topic of uh, landscapes, let's see. Here's a sketchbook that's got some landscapes. Um, where do I have skies? I promise you I painted some skies in here. Uh, this one. So this one was, I don't even know how I made that color. Uh, it's probably an ultramarine with some brown of some kind. Uh, this one was probably ultramarine with a little bit of the cobalt teal. Um, this one was again ultramarine and cobalt teal. This was at night, so obviously a different color altogether. This was uh, ultramarine and potter's pink. So yeah, um, I don't know that I have a specific sky color at all. Uh, I would argue that skies, it really depends on the sky. Um, I mean, mine is pretty messy too. I just fill it up a lot, but like there's a lot of mess here too. You know, there's there's some highlights, but there's also it's just messy. It's fine. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I will have another couple sketchbook tours up soon. Uh, this one's about oh, like three quarters of the way done, but I also have another one that's completed and another one that's well on its way.
What sketchbooks? Uh, so this one was is a handmade sketchbook. Handmade by two critters uh, on Etsy. Hi, Paolo. How are you? Um, Alex, I might take some pictures just for you of the absolute horror disaster that is my studio. I assure you, I'm not a neat person. I just... Some areas of my life are a little bit more contained. Thanks, Paolo. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a handmade sketchbook. Recently, I've been using a, um, an etcher sketchbook, and I really, really like those. Let's not make this a competition. Uh, it's not. I wish I wasn't the walking disaster that I am, but just, I get comments every so often on videos or when people just see, you know, my studio right after I clean it up or something like, oh, you're so neat. And it's not true. I can just, it's the camera can fool you because you're not, you just see what I cleaned up, you know, just the tiny little area. Um, not the, the takeout box and empty can drink and grime on the floor and all the other stuff that, you know, it's just not in shot. Yeah, so I just swept the disaster over to the side of the desk for the video. It's still, I mean, there's still like a whole bunch of nonsense here, but this is nonsense that I put here. I did just sweep all the mess to the side. Tiny ones are knit and work 100% cotton. Yeah, so I'm, I, uh, 
because I paint on hot press, I, the combination of hot press and 100% cotton is difficult to find. So I did use that one handmade sketchbook and then I found the etcher sketchbooks. The etcher sketchbooks are lovely. Um, their only issue is the, the cover is terrible. You have to find a good affordable one, but found out recently that can only make so large sheets of 90 pound cotton paper fairly priced, so you may have to make one. I got a coil binder, um, and so I've made some sketchbooks with a coil binder, but I also don't like spiral bound sketchbooks. So, and I feel like, you know, I'm always tempted to pick up another hobby, like every time something comes up, like, Oh, I could get into brass working and make my own brass boxes. Like, no, you have too many hobbies, Lee, stop. Um, so the, the book binding is kind of like that. But there is a local book binder who I've been in touch with recently who has started making sketchbooks and has promised to make a hot press, 100% cotton one for me. So maybe that's the other answer. The extra sketchbooks are working quite well for me though right now. Paulo says that is a nice pen. I have a Twisby Eco that looks suspiciously eh, suspiciously like that. Yes, I've heard that you like orange. This is a Twisby Eco. So you might have exactly the same pen as I have. What's your favorite ink, Paulo? Dan says everyone seems to have one. It's the it's the best pen. <laughs> Paulo says being an orange fan, I couldn't resist. Yes, indeed. <coughs> Dan says, I I like that too. I'd like to try resin pouring and lino stamping. Okay, so one thing that I have done which kind of helps is sometimes I'll take a workshop um, for a new medium or something and so then if it's somewhere where the materials are provided then I can just take that one workshop, do that thing once and it's not adding complication to the rest of my life. Mikey says I too and I'm am an orange fan. Yeah, I don't know that I would consider myself an orange fan generally, but uh, I wanted to color code my pens because um, I'd been using almost exclusively black ink, either in little roller balls or the, uh, the platinum carbon. And uh, I recently got, well, I have the Sailor Storia Lion, which is sort of a brown, like a, a light brown. I have this platinum uh, sepia. Um, so I'm enjoying brown ink recently. And uh, I want to try the Sailor Suboku, which is like the, the more grayed down uh, blue black. Um, so, yeah, given that I have a couple of different 
colorful pigmentings. I thought it would be nice to have some piston filler fountain pens in colors. So I got this orange one for, I thought it would go well for brown inks, and then I will get something more in the blue family for the blue ink when I get that. I'm not an orange fan, I have exactly the same too because it's so pretty. It is a really pretty shade of orange too. I like that it's transparent. Paula says, I have a new ink which I like, but I can't recall the name. Dan says, I like diamine inks. So yeah, I'm really fussy about my inks because because I want to be able to use them in artwork um, and not be worried about longevity, light fastness. So um, it, that's probably a good thing because it means I'm very limited in what I can use. Alex says, I absolutely love those pens, but haven't gotten into them. One, money. Two, I'm prone to mess making and ink is less forgiving. I understand and empathize and um, I'm going to be a terrible person and point out that these are actually really nice because they're a piston filler. So you just dip it into the inkwell and use the piston to fill it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> this one is light fast and waterproof. All right, Paolo, if you figure out the name of that ink, I would love to hear about it. Um, because you are speaking my language right now. Use the Pelican Edelstein ink in Topaz, a teal color. That sounds really pretty, Annette. Yeah, if I was using um, ink more for writing rather than art, I would absolutely, or if I was just using it in sketchbooks, um, then I would absolutely be all over that. I really like teals. Charles of Rotor and Klinger is the name of the ink. Maybe I'm lagged. Uh, so there's two sets of lag. I don't know that it's specifically you. Um, there's a lag for me, for like you see me a couple seconds after I record and then I see the messages a little bit later. So there's sometimes just a few moments in between when you type something and when I can reply. waterproof ink I I feel like maybe I tried that one and maybe it didn't get along with the pens I had at the time like a fountain like a rotor and clinger document ink I think and it just didn't I like before I got this uh, platinum sepia I tried their document brown I think I didn't, I didn't get along with it, but sketch ink. Okay, so I didn't try the sketch ink line. I think they have a different line that, that I did try. It didn't work so well for me. Yes, so I agree, Annette. A lot of the, the, um, these are fountain pen inks, so they're safe, supposedly, but, uh, some fountain pens are more fussy than others, so part of the nice thing about the Twisbees is that they are, 
They have really nice flow and they're unlikely to get clogged even with pigment inks. Like fountain pen pigments inks, not, you know, don't use drawing ink in a pen. Okay, I am getting a little distracted here. Sorry, I need to. be used in some of the smithing can be used with quills or brushes as well moreover it is exceptionally waterproof and like that that's fantastic ask cyan about fountain pens she knows everything yes uh i don't i don't know that she's here she might be watching she has a daily uh or sorry daily a weekly um sauna thing. She goes to a sauna with her mother-in-law on Fridays um, and it tends to interfere with the stream. Like she's, so she's, sometimes she tries to watch, but uh, I don't know if I can ask her right away. I'd ask her later. Okay, I'm liking this little fern. It's very time consuming to draw. But given me a little bit of uh, nightmares about <laughs> this project that I'm pitching to a local festival. I'll be drawing a lot of ferns. They're gonna be a lot bigger than this. Doesn't it? I wish I had like a, a weekly sauna thing. It just sounds so relaxing. I don't even know where I would go for that. I guess maybe some of the gyms locally have saunas, but yeah. Seems super cool. that and then let's try doing another one on here Whoop. and that asks Paula do you get a commission that I don't know, it sounds like he's just really enthusiastic about it. If this is a marketing play, it's a really good one. Sometimes I really just like the culture here. Wish we did some Scandinavian things. Yes, there's a lot about Scandinavian culture, which I think is really nice.
Yeah, I don't think they're as widely available in North America, but I don't know. I'm also really not a fountain pen expert. And it's one of those things where, like, I'm probably better off not uh, getting too obsessed with fountain pens because uh, I've done this with watercolor and, um, you know, it's probably not helping my, my artistic practice, my mental health, my, my hoarding to uh, collect every single watercolor I can get my hands on. So, uh, you know, probably best if I don't get too carried away with the fountain pens. I also, um, because the, the waterproof ones do dry, I'm also trying to keep uh, the number of pens I have to a minimum. Um, so I have this brown. I'm looking forward to getting a blue. I have a black. I could see getting a green of some kind, uh, but that's about all that I plan to have on the go. Sorry, Annette, who's that question for? Is that a question for Paolo or for me? I'm, I'm using brown. That's about as colorful as I get. I could see using some, some brighter colors, but yeah, Paolo, okay. We have teal and red for exams because on official documents I only use for mantings. Yep. Lana says Lamy Black is supposed to be light fast. Yeah, so um, I use platinum carbon black. Um, it's light fast, it's waterproof. I also, to be honest, with black, a lot of the time, I don't even use a fountain pen. I use um, the, the um, uni ball, uh, roller ball pens. They have light fast and permanent inks. Dip pen? Uh, no, so the, the uni balls are just like they're disposable little roller balls. I look like, here's one. But they last a good long while and they're cheap. And I'm a spaz who loses things, so. This is I have a Uniball Air and it's light fast and works great on watercolor paper. Yeah, so for black ink, I just like I keep a few Uniballs around and so then I always have one handy. Um, they're they're cheap, they work great, they're light fast and waterproof and run well on watercolor paper, etc. So 
Um, if I do use a fountain pen for black, then I'll use the platinum carbon and that works well, but the uniballs work fine for me too. So what are everyone's plans for the weekend? Paula says I have the stationary addiction. Yeah, I'm dangerously close to that. Um, and I'm definitely prone to like, you know, trying to collect things. And so I see that with my, with my watercolor collection and so I try to Try to discourage myself from, you know, adding too many more things that I collect. <laughs> Lana says sleep. I look forward to lots of sleep too. Also, Ev's stream tomorrow. Ooh. Kind of liking this. I know I do my stream on Fridays and it's pretty chill. And then watch that stream Saturday, Saturdays. Best plans ever. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm old and boring, but yeah. I get addicted to so many things, full knitting, watercolor, stationery, paper. Yeah, so I do have a knitting stash, although I've been pretty good about not buying too much wool myself. Um, my mother-in-law used to work at a yarn store, and so she's given me quite a bit of yarn, um, and I've bought a little here and there, but my stash is pretty manageable uh, wool-wise. Um, my watercolor collection is out of control and it's like not a good thing. Uh, stationary. I feel like I'm on the edge of the precipice there. And paper, I'm okay. Ryan asks, are those lichens these? This is lichen. What I'm drawing right now is ferns. Lana says, I just started knitting again after the summer break. Yeah, I'm just starting up uh, some things that I promised Alex. So that's my knitting for now. Matt says, my husband is so happy that we don't spend so many time in yarn stores anymore in our supply shops. You can try pens and pencils. Paula says, but just today I got a new order. I should stop buying art stuff and start using the things I have, but just today I got a new order of a lot of stuff that was on sale. I even got an aluminum Holbein palette. I'm still waiting. So I have a UPS shipment of 30 heavy enamel pallets that's supposed to arrive. I mean, it actually was supposed to arrive two days ago, but I keep getting updates. And now finally it's supposed to arrive today, but it was supposed to arrive 
by noon today and I'm not seeing it. So I'm kind of expecting that there's going to be a shipment of heavy aluminum pallets that I can, or heavy enamel pallets, heavy, they're like these guys, only prettier. It's gonna arrive that I can show off. But yes, uh, I buy too many watercolors. I recently bought some of the new, oh my goodness, like yesterday, I found out that Magello has a whole bunch of new colors, including some really interesting new pigments. So I ordered some Magello colors. I have an order pending that I need to place at Jackson's, me too that I intend to place at Jackson's because I want to do some light fastness tests and there are specific paints that I want to add to that. Ryan says, awesome, I had a sneaking suspicion it was like and whatever you're currently drawing was great. Um, I found your channel while trying to learn how to about making my own paint. I'm glad to have you found your content. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I'm painting a little fern right now. So I'm painting a forest floor scene. Um, this is a commission for a friend. I'm gonna do three little forest floor scenes. And so right now I'm just drawing all the things that show up on the forest floor, but then I'm going to paint in all the background as well. So that ideally the goal is when you look at this, it's just gonna look like forest floor, but then you can look a little closer and see all these little treasures. I, I do a lot of lichen, generally. Lichen is a personal favorite subject, so this is going to go into one of the other one of these. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll do a stream or a video of just painting lichen at some point. I kind of love with, with YouTube and social media that kind of enabled me to just sort of do whatever I want to do and um, make that into a business. Um, because the local art scene, of course, uh, you know, there's, there's always the more popular subjects. Um, and I think if I was depending on only local traffic, there would be a much higher pressure to do paintings that are, you know, popular subjects. Let's paint some roses. Let's paint some portraits. So I kind of like that the internet has allowed me to find the, the people in the world who want weird little forest floor drawings. Leanne Cole, but I've just got you a new fan. My other half is checking your inst out your Insta. Awesome. Hello, Dan's other half. So I'm using my husband's phone for my, <laughs> to read all your comments today um, because I'm using my iPad, which I usually use for the comments to for reference photos, and my phone is being used to record this video. Um, so something just came up with Happy Hour Games Room, and I was like, "Why am I getting? Why am I, what? What is this?" Ha <laughs> ha. Hello, yeah, it took me a minute, minute too. Like, I've, I'm pretty sure I've even used the abbreviation, but I always struggle. 
with abbreviations. Like, what am I, sorry, what am I supposed to be reading into this? <laughs> Sorry I had call, I think I vaguely recall my name being said, I'm assuming it was just to say I'm awesome. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I just said that I'm doing some knitting for you. For your uh, nieces and nephews. Ryan says, I love it. Keep up the good work. I'm sure the final painting will be packed with interest. I personally have a thing for fungus, so the lichen caught my eye. Cool, yeah, uh, I really love fungus too. Actually, uh, Ryan, if you want to see some fungus, Oh shoot, sorry, maybe I don't have it on this. Uh, sorry, I was going to show you some, some nice fungus images. Oh, actually, I can show you some nice fungus images. One moment, haha. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna switch to... Da -da -da. Plug for my Instagram, if people want Instagram, must want to follow me on Instagram, check out, no, I don't mean to like my own content, my goodness, but check out that fungus. Who? Can you see that properly? And then, while we're on the topic of lichen, fungus, and all these other things that are amazing and everyone should be interested in. <laughs> here's a, here's some illustration of some fungus. So this is an interesting thing. Um, one of my studio mates does beadwork and she doesn't feel like she's patient, but I can't imagine doing the work that she does. I find, um, I don't find that painting lichen and fungus tests my patience at all because it's like each little bit is this little bit of instant gratification. So it's like each little bit is a little bit different and I just go around and like, I don't know. It, it, it's, I find it much more uh, taxing patience wise to draw one subject that's like really smooth or has, you know, really subtle color transitions where I have to layer and layer and layer and layer. Um, I like doing fungus and lichen and stuff because it's, it's like each individual little shape. I don't know. I don't find it challenging in that way. All right. 
almost done with this fern and then I'm just going to add a few more little things and then I'm going to put a wash over the whole piece and then we can start thinking about uh, actually painting this. Cool. Well, Ryan, I'm glad that we have shared interests. It's always fun to have to see people who are interested in the same lichen and fungus and stuff. That's that's sort of my jam. Okay. So you mentioned that you found my content through paint making. Are you are you making paint yourself, Ryan? So now I am just going around and I'm going to add a few more little bits and pieces. So this was um, in a forest that had a lot of hemlock. So there's all of these little hemlock uh, needle things. And so I'm just going to draw in a bunch of those just sort of randomly um, as, you know, this is the the top layer of the painting and then I'm going to start drawing more later after I put in a layer of water. I bought a few of the pigment starter packs off natural pigments websites and my own attempts at making paint and did poorly. Uh, what went wrong do you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not the expert. In this chat right now, we've got um, Dan, Penholder Art, who makes paint commercially, sells it, and his paint is really lovely, so you can probably direct some questions at him. Um, sometimes we have a few other paint makers in here too, but I'm not seeing them today. Seems like too much binder, not enough, etc. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely some, uh, some fiddling that has to happen. And then there were also some other bits. Oh, maybe I didn't put them here. <sighs> oh, here we go. So I had some hemlock cones for reference and I'll probably go find some more because I don't know what I did to them. Um, but this forest floor was also full of hemlock cones. So I'm gonna draw in some hemlock cones too.
you have to head off this last night. Thanks for the stream, Rudy. Bye, everyone. Bye. Enjoy your evening. All right. Bye. Take care. Alex is the cheerleader in this chat today. Believe in everyone. Which is good. Not, not fun at all. No. Time is it? 4.01. Okay, yeah, I can keep going for a while. Um, I mean, I'm just working here, right? This is just... <laughs> You're just watching me do a commission. Bye, Dan. What kind of commission will it be? So this is a private commission for a friend. Um, and so uh, there are going to be three of these little pieces. Um, and they're just going to be little scenes from the forest floor. Um, just a whole bunch of different ones. With little critters and fungi and leaves and feathers and lichen and stuff. So this one has its little toady guy and a tiny little fern growing and some little bits of leaf litter and stuff on the ground. Uh, and then and the others will be different. Finally got onto this and I really like your work. Thank you. Yeah, um, I feel like my professional work, um, I, I can show a little bit more of it on Insta here. It's difficult to record edited video while working. Um, and so as a result, a lot of my work on YouTube ends up being a lot more simplified, a lot more sketches. Um, just because of the constraints of editing. So I'm actually hoping that with these live streams, I mean, you know, you've been watching me sketch a tiny little thing for two hours. Um, not everyone wants to do that, but uh, uh, it does allow me to then put some more, I don't know, real content here. Alex, am I even following you on Insta? What's your Insta handle, Alex? You can put it in my, uh, well, you can put it in my Discord or you can put it in um, Ev's Discord or you can join my Discord. Are you in my Discord, Alex? Time to stop working. Huzzah, huzzah indeed.
I think, I think I've made an Insta, I believe it exists. I'm not on your Discord, I need to get on that. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, you, you need to get on that. Um, there's a link from Ev's, like, way back in the YouTube channel, I think. Uh, otherwise, I'll send it to you. Or you can just find me, maybe? Just trying to figure out, yeah. I should start posting the link to that here. It is a little odd though because a lot of a lot of my audience is overlapping with us and so I don't really wanna um, you know poach her her people. Yeah. Actually, wait. I think I can post a link. Oh, shoot. Maybe. Damn it. Uh. No, I can't. Not with this setup. Because I'm on my... I'm on my husband's phone and his account. Whoops. And this doesn't have the right Discord account on it. Okay. Okay, so I am now going to apply a wash over this whole thing. Crap, I'm so late. I was in shipping hell. Do you want to tell me more about shipping hell, Ev? Well, you're just in time to watch me... Uh, apply a wash over this little detailed thing that I've been sketching for hours. to get a bunch of book orders ready and out. Book orders out? Are you shipping books? I know you're shipping books to me, but I didn't think you were shipping books generally. says, oh, are you into textiles dying? Um, is that a comment on my Insta? I did, I dyed 
one thing for one project. Um, so I, I try to paint from life wherever I can. I got a commission from the local university where they wanted a uh, braid with all different colors. So I dyed some yarn and braided it so that I would have a reference to paint from. Uh, but generally speaking, not very much. I do knit. Oh, you got more of your comics printed. That's cool. Nice. I should get one of your comics. The link was expired. What? How was the link expired? I assure you that the Discord still exists. Okay, well, I will give you a, a link at some point. Okay, so my plan with this is I'm just gonna put a wash of something very bright in the general area of the eaves. And it's okay if it overflows a little because around the ferns is gonna be quite dark. So I'm just gonna sort of let it bleed everywhere. So this is bismuth yellow that I'm just laying down here. So it's just gonna be like a nice bright lemon right here. Elsewhere, I'm gonna start moving into some less bright. So around here is gonna be darker. Ryan says one thing counts. Well, okay, sure. Then I'm into textiles and dyeing. I do, I do knit. Um, Ev asks, did they use platinum carbon ink? This is platinum sepia, the, the same one. And I have a lovely, uh, what's it called? Twisby Eco which apparently everyone in the chat has the exact same pen, which is pretty cool. Do you have one just like this, Ed? <laughs> so um, I wet this paper quite a bit, and this is a uh, 300 pound, 640 GSM paper, so it's going to stay quite wet for a while. It takes forever to dry, which is what I want right now because I'm just sort of distractedly putting in a first wash here. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit more of that bright yellow over in this area. Um, so I'm just knocking the, the bright white of the paper off here and then this will dry and then we'll add more layers on top. And I'll get some more darks. Get some more dark in here, in here, all the way over here. And make sure that this is nice and wet, not drying too much.
Do you have an orange one like this? I have. Um, damn. So usually I would be able to just post a valid link in the chat, but I can't right now because I'm on my husband's account and he doesn't have a link. So, uh, yeah, I'll post a link in the comments afterwards and I'll post a link back in Ev's Discord for my Discord and etc. So that anyone who wants to nerd out about chemistry or whatever can go do this in my Discord. <laughs> oh wow, a pharmacist who told me about a 30 day and was and calls for 30 day supply. We've come full circle. Hooray! Okay, so uh, this one is going to be here, a little bit more of this guy, a little bit more here, let's give him some yellow, let us throw some more here, let's even throw some blue in here. And for this, and we are just going to finish here and a little bit more over in here. Okay. And this. Okay. So that should knock out just the brightest whites of the paper. And dry eventually. <laughs> and so I'll just uh, chat for a bit. Maybe start on the second one. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's not focus on last week's drama. We all love you, Paolo. And we'd love to spend more time with you. And everyone is welcome here. Okay, actually I am gonna add some more color down here. And down in here, a little bit in here. apologize it's fine I just I think everyone's on the same page we all we're all happy to see you yeah Lise I, I don't think I said hi either or maybe I did like a long long time ago and I haven't just just haven't seen you in the chat for a bit how long have you been around Yeah, 
Uh, so I'm trying to add some color. I am going to set this aside now and let the colors do their thing. Um, yeah, maybe bring the other one of these forward. Annette, are you painting for yourself or are you trying to sell these pieces? Because if you're just painting for yourself, there's less of an issue with using Google references. Yeah, I mean, if you're just painting for yourself, you do have to be a little bit careful if you're just, if you're going to be posting to Instagram or whatever that you aren't passing off work as your own. But, um, I mean, for, for sketching, for practicing, it's fine to use pictures from wherever. Chrome Art says, I missed what the orange and black pen is on Lee's desk. Right, so this is a Twisby Eco. And it is just the transparent orange variety. And it's, you can see the ink in the middle. That is platinum uh, sepia pigment ink. I want to post it as for a challenge. I just want to make sure I don't get into trouble. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, maybe other people have better suggestions. Um, actually, here, I'm going to talk about using... Uh, proprietary references for a moment. Um, so I frequently get commissions where somebody is paying me to paint a thing that I don't have in front of me. Um, and while I would prefer to be working from life where I can, that's not always possible. So I'm gonna pick up some of the color on this, just right here. And Right here. Uh, but, uh, sorry. I frequently get commissions where I get asked to paint something that I don't have an image for. Um, now I'm a botanical artist, it's less frequently animals, but I'm gonna give an example where it's a specific animal. Um, so, uh, right now I'm working on a commission for a friend, uh, and, um, I'm trying to include all sorts of things that we found in a forest. One of the things that we found in, in this forest that we went to together was, um, a daddy long legs, which is a type of arachnid. It's not a spider. Um, I've forgotten what the scientific name for a daddy long legs is, but it is, they look like this. And this, what I'm showing you right now, is not my picture. Um, this is something that's, this is a picture that somebody else took, uh, but I want to include it in my painting. Um, so the important thing when you are going to be using 
a reference that somebody else took is you have to respect that that photograph was made by a photographer who is an artist. They had to make choices about how to frame it and the focal depth and whatever and all of that is valuable work that you don't want to steal. Um, the way I approach it is I am okay to use references if it's to help me understand how an animal looks or how a specific subject looks, but I don't want to copy the artistic part of it. So for example here, this is helping me to understand what a daddy long legs looks like, where its joints are, but it's not, I'm not going to use this composition. I, this is just going to be one little part of my piece. Um, it's going to be potentially in a slightly different position. Um, I, it's, it's just helping me to understand what that animal looks like. Um, so if I was drawing a tiger, I might choose the face from one image and the body position from another and change the lighting, etc. Ed says it's not a spider. No, so spiders have segmented bodies, like they have that, uh, you know, that back end. Um, it's so silly looking. Yeah, they are really silly looking. So I really wanted to include one because, um, so what I'm going to be doing for this piece is I'm going to be doing basically, uh, this. Um, and while I was photographing and sketching this log, um, a little daddy long legs came up and crawled on me. It was kind of cute. I mean, if you're into spiders, uh, which my friend is, uh, so I know that that's nightmare fuel for some other people, but daddy long legs won't hurt you. Um, anyway, uh, so it climbed on me, but my friend actually had my phone at the time and was taking video of me sketching. So we don't have any photos of the daddy long legs I saw. So I just found one that was in a similar position and I'm going to place it on my feet. Daddy long legs in the UK, a crane fly just doesn't look like that. Uh, no, uh, so th that's a common name. Here, I will look this up, actually. Um, uh, right. Uh, okay, so Wikipedia says they're spiders, but the last time I looked this up, they, can, they are not spiders. Okay, fine, whatever. They're, they are arachnids regardless, but full sedae, uh, and they are... They don't have a segmented body, they just have a little, little shape. So it's just a common name, they might be used for something else elsewhere. In Canada, they're spiders. Or, oh, Pilionis. Right, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Ev has a better answer than I do, because I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yes, that's what I, that's the one that I mean. The Opilions. Order of arachnids colloquially known as carvestmen, harvesters, or daddy long legs. Yep, that's the one. Thanks, Ev. That's what I needed. Yeah. Um, so, 
I am using an internet reference for this. I don't own this image, but it's just going to be one little detail that I'm using for shape reference in a larger painting. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, we can stop looking at spiders if you want. That's just the next thing that I have to do, guys. Not a nice blob with stick legs. They are so cute. They don't have like they don't have pincers. They just have like they they oh they're adorable. Sorry, Paula. Okay, I will I will move on and not do this because it, it bothers some people here. Um instead I will work on Insects really creep me out. Okay, well, um, I don't have to work on that piece right now. I can work on a different piece. So the, the, la the third piece is going to have a bunch of different leaves and a feather. And I'm, I'm still confirming with my friend whether she wants me to use this feather or a different one. No, don't worry, I can handle it. Are you sure? As long as they are not praying mantis. It's not a praying mantis. They are really cartoony looking though, which is part of what I like. <laughs> because they don't have that, that full body and they've got these like really ridiculously long legs. So it, they just look like, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm pulling this up because I do want to work on this piece next. So they're really tiny is the other thing. Is their body is just like this little ball. But then they've got these ridiculously long legs. Spider butt is kind of gross at times, like worse than the rest of it. Right, well these ones don't have the spider butt, like it, they don't have that second segmented part. They don't have, yeah. They like, then they're little, they don't have, yeah, they just have like these little, they're cute. I think in Denmark too, actually, we have this word Stankelben. I mean, they do, okay, so they are better because of their lack of butt. I will agree with that, but the other thing is actually they have a, a unique smell. different kind of booty wishes. <laughs> All right, this is the stream where we talk about spider butts. Spider butt, spider butt. <laughs> I don't get close enough to look at their bum, but I will take your word for it. Um, Okay, I'm not going to do the thing where I look up pictures of spiders. Um, you all can do it yourselves if you want, but spiders have a segmented body like most insects do where they have a head and then they have their torso that sticks out behind. And so that's sort of the, the butt part. Um, and uh, these don't, they're just like one little spot. I 
maybe by the time I'm done drawing this, the next, the other one will be dry and I can put another layer down. <laughs> Point out that uh, your your comment got spammed, and I had to manually approve it because we're talking about spider butts, and this is inappropriate for YouTube. I gotta make one of you mod <laughs> so that you can <laughs> approve your. Uh, Approve each other's spider butt comments. Approved. We need merch. Like a spider butt merch? Be careful, I'll make you spider butt merch. A shirt that just says spider butts. <laughs> yes, they can taste with their feet. And look, this one's tasting its feet. With zero context, all the better. I would wear it. Annette says, did I told you that our male cat is afraid of spiders? No, tell me more, that's hilarious. And I'm going to start inking this. And one day this other one will actually dry, but it is on very thick paper, so it takes a while. And I did really soak it. How about using a blow dryer? I don't own one. Sorry, I do own one, but it's at the other studio. I don't, I don't own one for my hair.
That is great. Oh my god, it's touching me, Mom! <laughs> that is pretty funny. He's a grumpy old cat, so I usually use Ev's old man's voice for him. Okay, well, Ev can do a better rendition now. <laughs> I'm enjoying all this personification of spiders. We do all hear it in our heads, and we are going to need a dramatic reenactment of this tomorrow. <laughs> the Annette's cat has Ev's old man voice. That's... yeah. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who vocalizes what their pets are saying. I thought it was just what happened after menopause. Oh no, we, um... We, uh, vocalized neurons, um... I mean, he just, he yells. And so we, like, we apply words to his yelling. I've never been fed in my life. <laughs> of course, I went to pee at this moment. Uh, well, yeah. Uh. I love the part of what we've been started doing in Lee's streams is giving Ev homework assignments for her stream the next day. That, that yeah, I mean. Why I'm here to make more work for Ev.
are we doing on dry? It's still like damp over there. And silly voices, I hope. Very silly voices. Yeah. Neuron, um, he lies to us. And he charts. So. I've never been fed in my life. Oh, sorry. Close chat for a moment, but we're back. All right. Yeah, I don't know how much longer I should be doing this. We've been on for almost three hours. Um, I mean, I'm gonna keep sketching for, I'm gonna keep working for a while, but this is still drying. My husband and I reenact the cat's conversations when we do the dishes. Well, when Neuron was a kitten, he moved. He had all kinds of interesting things that he had to say. How dare you? So Neuron also pees in the toilet. He trained himself. We had nothing to do with it, um, which is really cool. And we like it, but then, uh, you know, it's become a bit of an attraction where he'll, like people who come over will want to see the cat who pees in the toilet. So my aunt and uncle were visiting at one point. And, you know, so he goes to the washroom and he pees in the toilet. And my aunt follows him in and takes pictures. And Neuron comes back into our bedroom and just yells at us like, Did you know there are paparazzi? They're just, they're so rude. They took, they took video of me peeing. I do that when they sing for food and I'm prepping it. Yes, 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 yes. Perverts, I was in the washroom minding my own business Paolo, this drawing, you mean this arachnid? That's a compliment.
So Neuron definitely understands more than a few human words. So we started spelling things out like, you know, have you, did you give the, the cat F-O-O-D? And now he understands those too. So it's a bit of a problem. But he's still a cat. He's just smart enough to cause extra trouble. So elegant, it really made me look at the erected with another pair of eyes. Oh, Paolo, thank you. Or you want to stop cuddle with the, on the couch with your husband and find the cat's lunch on the pillow. Oh, yeah, Neuron, um, when he's sick, he comes, like, he'll come hang out with me under my feet. And so I've had more than a couple of times where, uh, you know, Neuron's being extra sweet that day and extra su snuggly, which usually he's not. And he'll just, like, be hanging out with me, and then I stand up, and I stand up, like, right in cat vomit. Oh, he has the intelligence of a small child. No. Yeah, it's, um, it's a, it, like, it really is a problem. Uh, it, because it, smarter cats, like, it's not, it's not like they're smarter, like, you can have philosophy conversations with them. It, they're just smarter in that they can make more trouble. So he understands doors, so he opens doors that he shouldn't open. It's great. Okay, is this dry? No, it's still damp. Uh, I do want to keep this going at least until this is dry so I can show what my next step is. But it might take a little while because it's um, very heavy paper. So we'll see. Okay, what's next on this one? One reason why we named everything odd breakfast, every meal, since we don't eat it often. Scooby snack. Close treats. I'll never accidentally say Scooby snack in passing. Is it 300 pounds? Yeah, this is 300 pound paper. Scout is a normal intelligent cat and Pico is dumb as a brick. Poor cute thing. Yeah, neuron. I mean, I mean, he's a cat, like cats are not, they're not smart creatures. So, you know, sometimes we'll joke around that it's Neuron because he only has the one. Um, but the truth is, as cats go, he's actually really bright and it's a problem. Okay, so, what I'm doing here is, I feel like I'm drawing all of these things just a little bit too big. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to Hi, Laura.
Georgia Pico is not that dumb. I think <laughs> she really is. She paid the high price for all that cuteness. Oh no. Yay, glad that Laura's healthy. Okay, we're gonna put this all the way over here. That has these ones. So this uh, breaking pattern in the log that I'm drawing, um, my friend used to work as a park ranger, the one who's commissioning these pieces, and uh, tells me that there's a, like there's different types of ways that a that wood can rot, and they're very helpfully named, like. The black kind is called black rot, and this kind that looks brown is called brown rot. The white kind is called white rot. So that's helpful. hope that Neuron makes it to 22 years. We will really miss that cat when he's gone. We do joke around with him, like, because he, he drinks my paint water, and he's not supposed to, but he does. Um, and we try to keep him from getting into things that he shouldn't eat. And so at one point he was curious about Jordan's beer. And we told him, not until you're 19. And so now we joke around with him. All the, like, we joke around all the time, like, no, no, Neuron, not until you're 19. Just legal drinking each year. Bye. It's getting pretty late here too. Well, I mean, it's 5 p.m. here. It's not actually late, but <sighs> but I've been on for some time now. So I better start thinking about wrapping this up, really. Oh my goodness, this is so wet. So I actually, initially I planned to do the sketching last night and then do this initial wash and then do only the <laughs> the other layers of painting today because these, this stays wet forever. Um, like, I don't think that this is going to dry in any kind of reasonable time. So I think I might actually wrap this up so that I can take a break from work and have a snack and stuff. And then maybe do some painting in the next stream. I really wanted to get, do some layers in this stream. Um, hmm. Well, I could let this dry. I could let this dry and then come like do a bonus stream maybe 
tomorrow after Ev's stream. I mean, that'll be late for some of you. But just so that I can show some of the later layers. Because I don't really want to wait until next week for this. Anyway, um, we can talk about that somewhere else. I'll be up. Could we set up a dual stream? I don't, how does that work, Ev? Thanks for being here, Paolo. I'm really, I was really happy to see you. We'll figure it out. Okay, we'll figure this out. Thanks everyone for coming. It was great to see you all. Thanks, Ev. Thanks, Luis, Paolo, Alex. Okay, cool. All right. See you. Bye. Uh, how do I turn this off? How do I turn this off? Yeah, all right.